Before we jump into Chicago Bears now, I would really appreciate it if you guys gave me a follow on Instagram. I'm publishing daily content over there, a lot of reels, some picture posts, and other things as well. So if you want more of that, give me a follow, Harrison Graham, at HGramNFL. The DMs are open. I can't always promise I'll get back in a timely manner, but I will respond eventually. Uh, if you want to talk some Bears football, trying to get to 7,000 followers by the draft. We're currently at over 6,100. So if you want to help a brother out, Give me a follow. More Bears content for you guys to enjoy. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. All right, it is Chicago Bears now, and I am Harrison Graham. Could the Bears sign veteran quarterback Ryan Tannehill? I've alluded to this a couple of times on the show. ESPN's Bill Barnwell kind of examined some of the top remaining free agents, and he named Tannehill as the best, or for the Bears, as the best fit for Tannehill, which I think... Uh, is pretty interesting and something I would agree with. I think it would be a pretty good fit for both sides because I don't think there is a spot out there left for Tannehill where uh, he's going to be a starter, and I really don't even think there's an opportunity where he can go compete for a starting job, so maybe he can come in here and come be a backup quarterback for a rookie like a Caleb Williams. So Bill Barnwell had this to say. The depth chart in Chicago consists of Tyson Bajit and Brett Rippon. Tannehill is not going to push likely number one overall pick Caleb Williams for the starting job, but a little bit of veteran experience in the quarterback room wouldn't hurt. I've said this. I'm on the t sign Tannehill train. He's kind of the last guy left in that realm of quarterbacks that has had starting success in this league, fits the mold of being a quality backup, but also a veteran who can provide good insight for a young guy. We know where this is headed. The Bears are going to draft Caleb Williams number one overall, barring something Shocking, and even if they don't, they're going to draft another rookie. So do you want to roll with a rookie Tyson Bajan and Brett Rippon, or do you want to roll with the rookie Ryan Tannehill and Tyson Bajan? Let me be clear. Bajan will be on the 53-man roster. I want him on the 53-man roster. You should continue to develop him as a second-year player. That's very cheap. But I would rather invest four or five million bucks into Ryan Tannehill than Brett Rippon on the vet minimum. Brett Rippon is Nathan Peterman 2.0. Does he have value in a quarterback room? I suppose. But Ryan Tannehill, who, yes, his play has been trending down in recent years. Last year, uh, he ended up being the backup midseason for Will Levis. Uh, the play wasn't that good when he was out there. I get all of that. But, A, he's not super far removed from good play. And, B, this is a guy who has been around, who has had success, over 150 starts, a – Better win-loss record than 1-1, one to one. 81 wins, 70 losses. A uh, lot of starts with Miami, a lot of starts with Tennessee. He's been a starter, he's been a backup. He led the Titans to an AFC championship game. The following year, he led them to the number one overall seed in the AFC, uh, lost in the divisional round, but still, that was a quality season. He has almost 35,000 passing yards. He has 216 touchdowns, 115 picks. He's got some dual threat ability, which whoever the Bears take at quarterback is going to have that, so... He could kind of provide some insight there on, you know, when to not take hits, when to take off, do things. I just think he's got an eye for the game. He's been around. He's in his mid-30s. And, oh, by the way, if the rookie quarterback has to miss some time, I like Tyson Bajan. I think he can be serviceable. But Ryan Tannehill, let's say this is a team that's competing for a playoff spot, probably gives you a better chance to win if he has to step in there for a game or two than Tyson Bajan does. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I still think Tannehill's decent. Um, I just think he would provide that value. He's got experience. Um, he's played a lot. He's seen a lot in this league. Um, the only question is, does he want that role? Does he want to be a mentor at this point in his career? I think if he wants to keep playing, the answer needs to be yes. I don't see, again, a single spot out there where he's going to go and compete for a starting job. I mean, are the Raiders going to sign him and have him compete with Gardner Minshew? I doubt it. Um, you know, are the Seahawks going to sign him to compete with Geno Smith? I don't think so. I, I just don't see a spot for Tannehill unless Washington signs him and they decide to not draft the Q QB at two, but it's pretty obvious they are after trading Sam Howell. Um, I think it's a good spot for both sides. He can come in here, be the backup, make some decent money, and help mentor the number one overall pick. So yay or nay, should the Bears sign Ryan Tannehill? Type S for sign, P for pass. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not going to give him $10 million bucks, but $4 or $5 million bucks incentives if he does end up playing, it's not going to break the bank. Bears still have a little bit of money left. I would certainly be very, very open to that if Tannehill was. Subscribe to the channel. We have daily Bears videos 
uh, including the latest news and rumors like we're doing today, 2024 NFL draft coverage. If there's any more free agency move like signing Ryan Tannehill, we'll have that covered as well. In-depth segments and analysis. I've got an updated depth chart breakdown that we're going to publish on the channel uh, on Sunday as well, so check that out. Guess what? It's all 100% free. Free of charge. Just crossed 90,000 subscribers, trying to get to 100K. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the support. Hit that sub button if you haven't already. All right. How about a Khalil Herbert trade rumor that's out there? Pro Football Network proposed Chicago trading Herbert to the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas' running back room is pretty barren right now after losing Tony Pollard. They re-signed Rico Dowdle, but they don't really have a guy who could start. I bet they're going to draft somebody, but Khalil Herbert would certainly be an upgrade in that room over anyone they have. Their idea was a sixth-round pick for Khalil Herbert. Now, in a vacuum, this is probably, you know, decent value. But for this draft, it's not great because we've talked about this. A lot of people view this as like a four- or five-round draft. Sixth, seventh round are guys that would normally be UDFAs, but this was a record low year in terms of underclass and declaring for the draft because people are staying in college for NIL money. They have have COVID years where they could sick for an extra year. Um, so – Sixth round pick, you've already seen Ryan Poles trade fifth and fourth round picks. He's kind of telling you that he doesn't value late round picks this year. I don't know, and especially considering the fact, yes, you bring in DeAndre Swift, so Blue Herbert's expendable. You could elevate Roshan to RB2. You could have Homer be your third back, or you could draft somebody with said sixth round pick if you wanted to, but I don't know, man. Like, it, it, There's pros and cons of both sides. I get it. He's in the final year of his rookie deal, so are you bringing him back? Are you paying him? Probably not unless it's like close to the vet minimum, maybe like three, four million bucks you'd bring him back. He probably won't be back. But you could make a strong argument that keeping him, even if it's just for this year, has more value than a sixth-round pick in this draft. Like, I'd almost rather have a late-round pick in the next draft if you're going to make this move because next year's draft should have more depth as things kind of get back to normal in terms of a typical seven-round draft. Now, I've always liked Khalil Herbert. I think last year, you know, he got his opportunity to be a full-time starter. It was up and down. Then he got hurt, took a while to get back, and had a couple of good games late in the year. But they signed DeAndre Swift for a reason. They wanted to elevate that RB1 position. But I still think Khalil Herbert helps you this year. Like, and you're not all in this year, but if it's a sixth or keep Herbert, I think I'm keeping Herbert. We've seen how impactful he can be is that number two change of pace back when David Montgomery was the lead back here. He was very good. He led the NFL in yards per carry uh, in 2022 in that role. So DeAndre Swift is going to be the starter. Herbert's not going to be a full-time starter, but he will still have a role on this team. If it's that or a sixth-round pick, I think I'd rather just keep Khalil Herbert, even if I lose him in free agency next year. What would you rather have in 2024? Would you rather have one more year of Khalil Herbert or just move on and take a sixth-round pick? What would you rather have? Type cage for Khalil Herbert. Like six for sixth round pick. I think I'm keeping Herbert. I think he has a role on this football team. That's the direction I would go into. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget, follow me on social media. More Bears content to come uh, as we uh, hit you with some short form content over there and some other posts. So hit me up at HGRAMNFL. Until next time, bear down.